What's up everyone, this is Alex from The Impact Factor, which is a blog, a YouTube account, a podcast, a Twitch stream, and more, where it's a scientist who talks about video games. Again, this is Alex, but today we're talking Hearthstone The Grand Tournament. We've got a lot of cards, so this is a new expansion for Hearthstone. As all of you know who listen to the podcast or read my uh, blog at all, I play a lot of Hearthstone. Um, for Black Rock Mountain, the previous expansion, which, uh, the adventure mode, I reviewed each of the cards individually in a perspe special perspectives on the blog, which you can find all the details in the description for this video. Uh, but 132 is a lot of cards to try to review at once, so <laughs> I figured I'd save myself the writing, save yourself, save your guys some reading, and just kind of pick a couple of the cards that I think might, may or may not make an impact on the meta of Constructed. I'm pred predominantly a Constructed player in Hearthstone, I like to play uh, ranked mode whenever possible. I'm not great at Arena, so these are just going to be from a Constructed ranked ladder standpoint. <clears throat> Uh, I've chosen about 25, let's, so let's get it started right away. The first card I've chosen is Twilight Guardian here. As you can see, 4 cost, 2-6, battle cry. If you're holding a dragon, gain plus 1 attack and taunt. Uh, so I think one of the things we saw with Black, Black Rock Mountain, where it tried to make dragon decks a viable thing, is that they just they didn't have the burst, which this card doesn't fix, but they couldn't really survive often uh, to live to play the big dragons, like your Ysera's, like your Alexstrasza's, like your Nefarian's even. Um, and I think Twilight Guardian is a step in the right direction towards making dragon decks, uh, decks that want to use dragons, more viable. Um, <clears throat> so if you're holding a dragon, which, you know, if you stock your deck with enough dragons of the upper cost, you know, the nine, eight, nine mana dragons, your Chromaguses, your Ysera's, uh, Twilight Guardian is almost sure to get value. Uh, four mana, three, six taunt is nothing to scoff at, so this is going to take some removal from your opponent, uh, or attack buffs, like from an abusive sergeant, for to clear it and really just kind of sits there as a big body on the board that someone has to deal with. Uh, again, none of these cards I think are gonna, that I'm gonna talk about today are gonna be auto-include, redefine the meta, but I think if dragon decks are gonna be a thing, and I think dragon warrior actually might start to be a thing, we can talk about that when I get to the warrior cards, I think Twilight Guardian certainly could be a part of that discussion. A 3-6 taunt for four is pretty decent, gives you a lot of survivability, a minion out on the board early, and I think for decks that want to play dragons, so potentially Priest, Paladin, and then Warrior and Mage from the cards that the Grand Tournament is bringing, uh, could provide a lot of value. So I'm excited for this one. It's not something I think I'm going to go out and craft right away, but it's something I think that is worth thinking about if you want to build a dragon deck moving forward. And so the next card, I'm starting with neutrals first, then I'm going through the rest of the classes alphabetically is Idis Darkbane. Again, if I mess up any pronunciation, I'm not a World of Warcraft fan. I just play Hearthstone. Um, so this is a 3 mana 3-4. Whenever you target this minion with a spell, deal 3 damage to a random enemy. Uh, so this came with the sister card, um, Feel a Lightbane, which is a similar effect, similar cost, except she gains Divine Shield instead of doing 3 damage. But I'm just going to choose this one today. This effect is insanely powerful. So 3 mana 3-4 are already past the vanilla test in stats. A lot of people used to say the vanilla test should be, if it costs three mana, it should be a three three, and then that for all the rest of the mana costs. But the, honestly, the new vanilla test here it needs to be, have one additional stat. So a three mana three four is expected, it's good, it's playable. But really what you're looking for is this effect here. Uh, it deals three damage to a random enemy if you target it with a spell. That opens up a ton of possibilities. Uh, the ones that easily come to mind are spare parts. So if you were to build a deck that uses spare parts, like from, your Clockwork Gnomes, or your Tinkertown Technicians, or you know what have you, targeting Idis with one of those is a crazy amount of value, and as is dam damaging a random enemy, can clear boards pretty easily. Three is a lot. It's going to clear a lot of hell a lot of minions in the early game, uh, as well as if you're aggressive deck, if it hits face, that you know, that's a pretty decent amount of value. Though you're probably usually going to want this to be hitting minions, so that your own minions can be hitting uh, the opponent in the face. I think this is potentially powerful in Mage and Priest, and Priest has a lot of those buff spells like Power Word Shield, or, uh, what is it, Velen's, um, <clears throat> got that, that three mana, two four buff, uh, that Velen buff. So I think Priest, potentially this could be interesting to help them curve out in the, you know, early game and help fight against the aggressive decks, or potentially even be seen in a new aggressive Priest. However, I'm skeptical as Priest, as we'll see with the Priest card, the three mana slot has already been crowded. Um, with your Dark Cultists and your Injured Blademasters, and it's going to be even more crowded if you want to try out new things. 
I think Ida's Darkbane is powerful enough to be played in any deck where you're gonna have at least a few spells to target your own minion, and is worth trying out. That, e that effect is just crazy. And if you consider, again, using something like Spare Parts, you could get several procs off in one turn, and so that's three damage, and three damage, and three damage. I think her effect is a little bit more powerful uh, than Fiola's, which is gain Divine Shield. Uh, though I could be wrong about that too. Gaining Divine Shield is super useful for clearing minions. You could attack into a minion, give Divine Shield, so you protect her. These are both going to be powerful cards that I think are going to make you want to consider them for a 3 drop slot if you have a way to target them. And not all decks do, but I think depending on how strong they are, they could even make new decks that add more of these uh, cards, like say for Druid using Mark of the Wild or, or cards like that. Uh, so I'm excited about this one. I think it's pretty powerful. It's certainly going to want to be answered. This is a minion that's going to... Your opponent is going to clear off the board as quickly as possible. Uh, so the next card here is Gormok the Impaler. You can see he's a 4-mana 4-4. Four four. Uh, so those are pretty great stats. Uh, are pretty pretty good stats. You, I guess you would want him to be a 4-5 if you're passing the vanilla test I just talked about. Uh, but his battle cry reads, if you have at least 4 other minions, deal 4 damage. So this is a card I'm really, really mixed about. Um... I could see in a, say, a token-based deck, or a zoo-like deck, or even aggressive deck like a face hunter or an aggressive paladin deck, there's a chance that you could have three minions, you know, four other minions on the board, uh, especially something with like, uh, you know, paladin, you've got a bunch of your guys coming out and your muster for battle. Uh, so I think the, this Gorm Gormok the Impaler is going to live or die by how easy it is to keep minions on the board. So historically, and in this current meta, it's quite difficult to get <laughs> four, to have four minions stick on your board at the same time. Um, but as more and more decks seem to be kind of wanting to flood the uh, flood the board with their minions, again, the decks I mentioned, as well as a new Shaman archetype that might spring up with the new cards in the Grand Tournament, I think Gormok, if you can see that, his effect is so powerful. So, you know, souped up fire elemental effect of dealing four damage targeted four damage here to whatever you want his stats are good i think he's going to be worth considering again none of these cards i'm talking about today the impact they're going to make is any def is 100 percent defined i kind of gave my scorings and my estimate as how often they'd be played for my black rock mountain and i was dead wrong about a lot of the cards like i thought hungry dragon was going to get played a lot in that card sees no play uh because there's just way better four drops uh piloted shredder is <laughs> the main offender here. Uh, but I think he has a really cool effect, a really powerful effect, and certainly might reward decks for playing tokens, uh, which I think is cool. So one to look out for, for sure. Next card here is Justicar True Heart. This is a six mana, six three, and the battle cry reads, replace your starting hero power with a better one. I apologize for not having the graphic for all the better hero powers, uh, but just to name a few examples, Hunter's Hero Power now becomes deal 3 damage, Warlock now reads draw a card that, so you don't have to pay the life. Uh, but I think the Hero Powers where this is going to matter the most are Druid and Priest. So Druid now is gain 2 attack and 2 armor, and Priest is restore 4 health. Um, and so I think that's uh, pretty powerful. And Paladin I will, I think it, as well, I think is summon 2 one, one Silver Hand Recruits. And so this is a, though it's a neutral legendary, you're really only going to see it in those couple of classes where they get a really m substantially more powerful hero power. So like Druid, like Paladin, and like Priest. Uh, she's very slow, so she's a 6 mana 6-3, six, and the 6 mana slot is already a little crowded uh, with cards like Sylvanas. So this is going to go through, this first things, uh, th first things first, this is going to go into a slower deck. Uh, at 6 mana, you're going to want a deck that can kind of live out this the long game because you're want to you're going to want to take advantage of your better hero power and so you need to have all that extra mana to use your hero power and to live uh so this is going to really rely on slower decks being viable which right now they're not super viable with the amount of aggro and the amount of patron warrior that's running around uh but we'll see so if the meta can slow down and if the decks that I, if the classes that i mentioned you know druid priest and paladin can find a slot for her i think she could be really powerful uh, this is a really strong way to win the late game if you constantly get this insane value out of your hero power. But again, she's probably, it's a good thing her effect is a battle cry, because with three health, she's gonna die the turn after you play her probably 95% of the time. This is a conservative estimate here. I'm a, bi I'm a biomedical scientist, not a statistician, but I'm pretty confident in those numbers. 
Uh, but she's interesting, she's cool. I like to see effects like this where they influence the board for the duration of them after them being played. Uh, and she's really interesting, so. Potentially might make an impact, though I'm skeptical. The last neutral card I wanted to mention here is Chillmaw. So this is a new dragon legendary uh, from this the Grand Tournament. Seven mana, six six, as you can see here. Taunt, and then the Death Rattle reads, if you're holding a dragon, deal three damage to all minions. So this is an interesting one. Again, I think a lot of this, uh, <clears throat> A lot of whether or not this card will see play depends on a couple things. First, if control decks are, vi are, are viable, uh, because a lot of control decks play dragons anyway. You know, Alex Draws is a pretty commonly included one, but Nef uh, Nefarian and Isera are also not bad, and certain decks like the Control wa Warlock have been using Chromagus, uh, as well as if a dragon deck is viable, because obviously this is potentially best in a dragon deck. And I say potentially because its effect is really interesting. Uh, Chill Mall is going to be a card that makes people think. So if you play this and you have a board with other strong minions, you might not want to play it if you have a dragon in hand because, you know, it's going to be doing three damage to all minions, including your own. Uh, however, uh, it could also help you clear your opponent's board. If you're feeling a little overwhelmed, you could drop this. They have to kill it and you're going to get the effect unless they choose to silence it. And in a dragon de deck, if they're silencing a 6-6 six, six taunt, that saves you a silence for keeping your... Sarah popping out dream cards or you know other strong like you know Ragnaros or other strong finishers that you might be using in a dragon deck and so it's going to have that mind game is well what do they have a dragon and if you play it you know kind of balancing the risk reward of that effect I think it's really cool uh seven mana is a, a little expensive and not for the effect but for if you're using chill Maw to clear the board of enemy minions I think by turn seven when you're playing this or turn six with the coin or I guess if you're making a dragon paladin deck uh, where you have the that five drop that reduces the cost of your dragons by two on turn six as well i think you might struggle uh to fit to fit this in uh, it's a really cool effect though i love the art of it as well it's super cool um so we'll see we'll see if it gets played i hope so it's cool i always want to play slower decks so i'm interested in this uh, so now moving on to the class cards. I apologize for this mock-up here. I couldn't find a better image. Uh, this is the Druid. We're going with Druid first. And a couple cards uh, for Druid that stood out for me as at least having a higher chance of being played. <laughs> I'm being really conservative here, folks, about my uh, my estimate. Uh, so this is Living Roots. It's a one-mana spell, and Blizzard is now giving every class the option to, to have a one-mana spell to do two damage. Uh, so this does choose one deal 2 damage or summon 2 one, one saplings. Uh, so the effect itself isn't super powerful, but I love the versatility that Living Roots gives you. Um, if you don't draw Wrath in some games against aggro, if you don't draw Wrath or Keeper of the Grove as a druid against faster decks, you're sometimes going to have a really hard time catching back up on the board, because most contemporary druid decks at least really rely on getting your four drops out as fast as possible and not really having as much to do before that, which is why some druid decks ran Zombie Chow, just in addition to try and help clear the early board. Uh, not that I'm saying Living Roots will replace the Zombie Chow by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but it's a cool way to remove a threat, like a knife juggler, if you want to cast a spell. But I also think, uh, as I mentioned briefly earlier, token decks might start to be more of a thing. Uh, as you have, adv there's cards that really are bolstering the strength of having tokens, and Druid was already uh, had semi-decent token decks, period, because you have cards like Power of the Wild and Savage Roar. Um, so cool, having one mana to have one, one, two 1-1 one, one saplings, you know, if you could combo that into a Power of the Wild and have two 2-2 two, two saplings plus, you know, whatever other creature you have on the board, or if you Savage Roar, this is an extra, you know, six damage if they live to turn. Uh, so I think it's versatile and cool and certainly might find its way into Druid decks. Now to the card, I know it's early in this review, but to the card I think is probably the most powerful card in all of the Grand Tournament. And this is the Darnassus Aspirant. It's a two mana, two, three, battle cry, gain an empty mana crystal, and death rattle, lose a mana crystal. So for starters, it passes my vanilla test. It's two mana, two, three, the stats are good, but this battle cry is so powerful. Basically, it's wild growth attached to a body. And it's a significant body too, you know, it doesn't have to pay the penalty for having a strong effect. It's not like a 2 mana 1-2 one, or 2 mana 2-1. Uh, so gaining a mana crystal is crazy. If you play this turn 2 and it's able to live to turn the next turn, you're on turn 4 already. You can drop your Shredders, you can drop your Keeper of the Groves. 
Uh, I don't agree with what people have been saying and try to silence this to get, you know, so you don't have to deal with the death rattle. I think that death rattle is really not so bad. It forces your opponent to kill this early. Otherwise, you're already ramped to turn four and you're ramped to turn five and you stay that turn ahead. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if maybe a more minion based druid deck comes about where they don't run wild growths and they can run this instead just to have that extra little boost and then. On the off chance this dies, they still have three drops that they can run, and they're not just waiting for their four, five, six, and seven drops. Um, so even as you lose this mana crystal, you're losing the one you gain, so it's not like it puts you behind. Uh, so I'm really excited to use this card in a Druid deck. Maybe make a new kind of form of a Druid deck where it's really minion heavy, tries to get out early, and more like a Druid tempo deck, so it has a one drop, two drop, three drop, four drop, five drop, etc. And I think this art is awesome. <laughs> if there is a card that tempts me to make a golden one, I think Darnessus Inspirant is the one. So keep an eye on this. If there are any of these 26 cards that I'm re you know, reviewing today uh, will be included in the new meta, I think this one has a strong chance. So I'm putting the impact factor stamp of approval on Darnassus Aspirant. The last druid card I will talk about is Aviana. So this is 9 mana, 5-5. Five, five. Your minions cost one. Uh, so when this card was released, people were flipping out. Uh, obviously, the effect is insanely powerful. You know, people imagine these dream scenarios. Turn nine, you drop Aviana, and then you have an Innervate in hand, and then you can play, a, you know, Kel'Thuzad and an Ancient of Lore, and uh, who knows, an Ancient of War. So you get all that mana stats. You know, it looks beautiful, lovely. I think Aviana has potential. Uh, which is why I included her <laughs> in this video, uh, but I'm a little skeptical. You're not always going to have a coin or a uh, innervate to get extra creatures out when she's out, and you're really going to want that because there's a nine mana five five. There is this 95 percent chance again, <laughs> like I mentioned earlier, that she's going to tie the turn that she's played. You know, you're going to play her and she's going to die. So you really are going to want to get value out of her right away. Uh, Druid does have some advantages. They have really good taunt creatures with uh, um, the five mana druid, you've got your Ancient of Wars. Um, and so I think there's a chance you might be able to play her behind one of your taunt creatures and have that effect go off. Um, but again, you don't want to design your, your deck with too many nine, eight, seven mana drops in hopes to draw her and then play this at the same time because then your early game is gonna re be really kind of screwed over if you don't draw into your, you know, your Wraths and your Swipe and your Keeper of the Groves early. I think her effect is insane, and I know people are going to try to make her work. I'm not sure if she's going to work, but I know if I open her, I'm certainly going to try. <laughs> so she's a very cool card. I love the design on it. Let's go to the next class. Uh, so I guess I should be ashamed to admit, but I'm going to proudly admit that Hunter is my favorite class to play in Hearthstone. Before you guys get your pitchforks out, I don't play face Hunter. I play mid-range. I've played Hunter was the first class I played with when I first started when Hearthstone launched and it's been my favorite throughout. I almost have it level 60. Anyway, mid-range hunter, and I've tried to make control hunter work. Uh, <laughs> uh, mid-range hunter works a lot better. So this is a cool This is a cool card I want to spotlight. It's power shot, it's a three mana sp hunter spell. Deal two damage to the minion, and to a minion and the minions next to it. So this is kind of like their explosive shot, which is that five mana, deal five damage to a creature and two, mana, two damage to the creature surrounding it. Uh, it's cheaper. I think if Control Hunter or a spell-based hunter are going to work, this card will fit into it. Uh, there's a card, Lock and Low, that I'm not spotlighting today, um, which is two mana, a hunter spell. For every spell you play this turn, add a random uh, hunter card to your hand. I think that card's a little gimmicky, so I'm not sure even in a control-based or spell-based hunter deck that's gonna that's gonna have a place. But I think this one's pretty powerful. If you're playing a slower hunter deck and you want to have control of the board early, Power Shot's a good way to clear out three of these smaller drop creatures against aggro decks. The thing is, if the meta slows down, which people think might happen with the Grand Tournament, dealing two damage to three minions at best, maybe two, is not going to be that great, especially if minions have these bigger bodies, it's not going to kill it. So I'm skeptical about this, but if someone tries to make a controller, a more controlly hunty, well, more controlly hunty, a more controlly hunter work, or even a spell based hunter work, this is a card that's worth considering. The three mana slot is a little crowded with your Unleash the Hounds and your Kill Commands, so this might get edged out, but I like it. Uh, this is the last Hunter card I believe I'm talking about today. 
Uh, Hunter Legendaries are a little disappointing. I don't think either of them is going to see a tremendous amount of play, but I'd be excited to eat my words. Uh, but this is a rare a rare card, Gram Wrangler. 5 mana, 3-3, three, three, Battle Cry. If you have a beast, summon a random beast. So as someone who plays a lot of mid-range Hunter myself, I lot have a lot of beasts in hand. I've got my Haunted Creepers, you've got the Hounds from Unleash, you've got uh, you know, your Animal Companions, and then obviously High Main and the Hyenas that are summoned from the High Main. And then decks, uh, you know, can run even more beasts than that, depending on, you know, what looks good. Uh, so I think there's a high chance that you're going to get value out of the Ram Wrangler. Uh, someone on uh, Reddit, our Hearthstone, did the calculations, and I believe the stats are approximately three and a half for health, three about three and a half attack and about three and a half health for the random beast that you summon. Um, so this card is a really mixed bag. So imagine if you play this on turn five and you have your whatever haunted creeper out, and then his battle cry summons. A Savannah High Main, or a King Crush, or a Gazrilla. That will be that's insane. That value is crazy. But even if it summons a Stampeding Kodo, or even a Lost Tall Strider, you know that's a five, four, you know another five four. You could get really crazy stat value out of this card split between two bodies. I mean, you always run the risk of you know summoning something like a Web Spinner or a God forbid a Captain's Parrot or your Stone Tusk Boars. But I think it's he's worth considering. Hunters haven't really had a great five drop, uh, especially in the mid range. You often just play Lotheb and Sludge Belchers. I'm not saying he's better than either of those cards, so it'll be interesting to see if he finds a place. But potentially a more a slightly more beast heavy uh, hunter mid range deck might play this. I'm interested to see you try it out because you know if on average you're getting about another rounding up around four four, but even another three three, so that's a six six for five spread between two creatures on average. That's not bad, uh, and I'm interested to see if it <laughs> comes to fruition. So, moving on to the next class I'm going to is Mage. Uh, so this is a Mage Secret effigy. It's three mana, like all Mage Secrets, and the secret reads: When a friendly minion dies, summon a random minion with the same cost. Um, I think this is kind of a deceptively powerful Mage Secret. Uh, so a lot of the times these tempo-based and more, even more controlly-based uh, mage decks are running your mirror entities, and then sometimes they'll run a duplicate to try to get value of your own creatures, but sometimes you want that one extra secret to kind of complement your suite of mirror entity, and I think Effigy could do that. Uh, it, instead of putting two copies into your hand, you get one right back into the, into the uh, battlefield, which I think is really powerful. And I think this might be interesting, especially if you have a more slower, you know, more controlly, or maybe dragon mage, or even a slower mid-range kind of mage. Say your piloted shredder dies, you have an effigy pop that you got from a mad scientist, or um, from <clears throat> that the three mana four three that puts a secret into play for free. You could get pretty crazy temple value off of this. Um, and then it only gets crazier if you're playing a really slow mage deck and say your Sylvanas dies and then you get a new 6 drop that procs as your Sylvanas dies and steals another minion. So I think there's a lot of potential here, especially in a deck that maybe wants to get secrets out or just basically wants to control the tempo of the match. And so I'm going to try and make it work. We'll see. I believe this is the last mage. This is Ronin, the 8 mana legendary, 7-7, seven, seven. death rattle, add 3 copies of arcane missiles to your hand. Uh, this is pretty powerful. I think this was released the same day as another legendary, which will be at the very end of this video. Uh, that kind of overshadowed this a little bit. But I think this card, I, I mean, again, I know I'm saying this a lot, but I think it's deceptively powerful. Uh, sure, 8 mana 7-7, seven, seven, uh, the stats aren't great. He is vulnerable to big game hunter, but and he's more vulnerable to silence, but I think his death rattle is insanely powerful if it goes off. So you add three copies of arcane missiles to your hand. So that's a better... Uh, Avenging Wrath for only three mana and then it only gets crazier when you start combining it with synergy cards for instance if you draw a flame waker late uh, and then you're able to drop the flame waker and then drop your three missiles that's a crazy amount of damage for each proc of the flame waker or say you have an archmage Antonidas that's a lot of fireballs to your hand some people have mentioned Gazlo that's funny <laughs> I don't think it's gonna happen uh, and then potentially even making a control mage deck with Maligos and then having that go off would be crazy. Uh, I think there's so many opportunities to abuse these three copies of Arcane Missiles and people would say, yes, you can be, you can be silenced pretty easily so you don't get that effect. Uh, but his body is still, is still pretty significant so they're going to want to deal with him. And if you're, again, 
as I say a lot for these control decks, if they're using a silence on your Ronin, it saves their silence for, you say it you know, removes one of their silences that they can't use against one of your big threats. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to be played that much, but I think people are going to try, maybe myself among one of them, and I think his effect is more powerful than it comes off, at least at first. Sure, he's no Dr. Boom, but no card is a Dr. Boom, so <laughs> don't compare Dr. Boom because he's a little bit too powerful. Uh, so now we'll talk the one and only Priest card that I'm going to discuss today. That's right, only one Priest card. They keep getting gimmicky weird cards that don't seem to solve the problem. Hopefully they're in a good place in this new meta. If it slows down, Priest is certainly good against more control decks. But we're talking Shadow Fiend. You can see here, 3 mana, 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you draw a card, reduces cost by 1. So the effect is very powerful. Um, as every single card you draw while he's still in play, you get that mana reduction. So they can help you ramp earlier, they can help you create new combinations of cards that you would be able to before without any other forms of cost reduction. You know, combined with the effect of somebody, say, an Emperor Tharsen, you can have a lot of reduction on cards in your hand, you can pull off crazy plays. I think the card effect is really good. The stats could be a little bit better. I think even a 3-4 would be fine, and this card wouldn't be too powerful. <coughs> Excuse me. But I think one of the issues here, again, is that this tries to fit into the very crowded 3-mana slot. This would probably get its most value out of uh, either a tempo or a control deck, so I guess you could make arguments for an aggro priest deck if that were to ever be viable. Um, but it's just fighting against so many other three mana spells. Your Shadow Word Deaths, your Thought Steals, your Injured Blade Masters, your Dark Cultists. Uh, so I think it's interesting to try and see if someone can fit him in. I'm not convinced, but his effect is very cool and very powerful. So when effects are very powerful, you always you always have to wonder. Maybe someone's gonna like find a way to exploit it. So you never know. So moving on to Paladin here. Uh, this is a common Warhorse Trainer, 3 mana, 2, 4. Your Silver Hand Recruits have one attack. Uh, it's funny this card comes right after the previous Priest card, because I think it has a lot of the same issues, but also has a very similar, extremely powerful benefit. So your silver hand, giving your Silver Hand Recruits plus one attack is crazy. If you imagine a scenario where you coin out, say, your Musher for Battle toin, turn 2, and you get three Silver Hand Recruits, and you play this on turn three, that's six damage with just your Silver Hand Recruits. And then, as long as he remains in the battlefield, every single Silver Hand Recruit you have, uh, you summon, is going to be a 2-1. So that effect is really powerful, can really help you make very favorable trades with these little 1-1s, one -ones, now 2-1s. But I think the 3-mana slot is pretty busy for Paladin, with your Muster for Battle, with your Aldor Peacekeeper, and with some other cards that people slot into the 3-mana slot. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see who he gets played. He's got good, he's got decent stats, 3 mana, 2, 4. It's a little shy, but the 4 health is appreciated in a card like this. The effect is extremely powerful, so I think if there's a silver, you know, silver hand recruit kind of deck, he might fit in, uh, but I thought he was pretty cool. Next is Tuscar Jouster. 5 mana, 5, 5, and has the Joust battle cry. And the Joust battle cry, if you win, gets you 7 health. So, Joust is this cool mechanic. I really want to see if it can work. It certainly is a smart mechanic to give these slower decks with higher costed creatures an advantage against aggro decks that use a lot of, you know, one, two, maybe three mana cost creatures. So if you're filling your deck with four, five, and above mana costs, there's a good chance you're gonna win some of the Jousts against aggressive decks, though not against, you know, slower decks. But his effect is pretty powerful. So a five mana, five, five isn't bad stats at all. And his effect is pretty powerful. If you're behind on board and you're losing a lot of health as a paladin, you can drop this on turn five, gain seven health. That's a good value. I mean, considering Holy Light's two mana, and that's restore six health, that's pretty much you're getting seven mana value for a five mana card. Uh, so that's pretty great. I'm excited to see if a Joust deck works. I think Paladin would be a good home for it. With, you've got a lot of late game cards, a lot of late game minions. It's cool, and this is my this is my vote for best art in the set. I mean, it's a walrus riding on top of a pretty cute turtle. So I'm all for this card. I like to see it be used. I think this is one of the best joust cards they've shown off. One that you're probably is most likely to get played, but we'll see. This is the last paladin card, going with a legendary Eadric the Pure. You can see his stats here. 
Battlecry, change all enemies attack to one. So I saw a little, I saw some mixed feelings about this when it first was released, including my own, but this effect is so powerful. Again, if you're putting him in this joust deck, he's got a hefty seven mana mana cost. The three seven are decent stats for this, this effect because seven health means he's gonna be around a while. And if you're just changing all of the health of enemy minions to one, that's gonna take a lot of minions to kill him, <laughs> to kill him fast. And so, not only does this stymie any bleeding you're facing against an aggressive deck, changing all of their attacks to one, um, but could also completely wreck your opponent's board if you're playing against a controller or a slower matchup. If they've got a bunch of, you know, five attack creatures out and you turn them all to one, that's awesome. Like, you saved yourself so much damage, your minions are going to be way more powerful, can trade super favorably into their creatures, it punishes people for overextending. I think his effect is super powerful. I'm glad that Paladin is getting these extra tools. As you see with Aldor Peacekeeper, making creatures have one attack is pretty powerful, and his body's not bad. And maybe a 4-7 would have been, been a little bit better, or a 3-8, but I'm happy. I think people are going to try to make him work. I want to see him work in maybe a slower control Dragon Paladin, or just standard control Joust Paladin. Moving on to Rogue, one of my favorite classes, but continues to get no love. We've got a card that I really think is not going to be played at all, but I really want it to be played. This is Cut Purse, 2 mana 2-2, two, two, and when it attacks the enemy hero, put a coin into your hand. So coins in Rogue are a godsend, because their mechanic is kind of dumb. Uh, you know, some, some classes have good mechanics, other classes like Paladin, I mean, other classes like Shaman and Rogue do not. Uh, the combo mechanic is awkward to pull off. Sometimes you can't play cards on curve because you want to play another card before it so you can get that combo off. Well, coins are a good way to enable combo. I think if this card can live one turn and attack, he gives you a decent amount of value because that's one coin back, so functionally he's a one mana, two, two, pretty good. The longer he stays alive, the better, too. Unfortunately, his stats are pretty bad. I think even at a 2 mana 2-3, two, he wouldn't have been too powerful. Uh, you can envision a scenario where you coin him out on your turn 1, and so you have a turn 1, 2-2. Two, two. It's probably going to live until the next turn, so you can, get a coin, you can get the coin back that you used to get refunded your coin. I really want its, its stats to be better, but I think especially with all the combo that exists in Rogue and relying on combo to get your powerful effects. This is something that I hope is good enough. Probably not. Darn it. All right, another <laughs> unfortunate card I'm having to spotlight with Rogue here is Shady Dealer. Three mana, four three. It's not a pirate, but it benefits from having pirates. Battlecry, if you have a pirate, gain plus one, plus one. So that's right, if you have a pirate on board when you play this, he's a 3 mana 5 4. Which, I wish it were a 3 mana 4 5, but I digress. A 3 mana 5 4 is nothing to scoff at, especially considering that rogue decks are usually pretty aggressive. Uh, they're really, Blizzard's really trying to make rogue this pirate class, which I'm not sure if that's the right approach. I don't really like playing pirate rogue. Uh, but if you get, you know, enough pirates in there early, they've introduced a couple new pirates in this set. Maybe Pirate Rogue will be a thing, because uh, that's pretty powerful. A turn 3, 5, 4 is, needs to be addressed pretty quickly. If you've got, you know, your Blood Sail Raiders or your, you know, whatevers, I don't play pirates. <laughs> maybe it, maybe it's worth it. A lot of the pirates are, do cost uh, fairly low, so it's pretty easy to get a 1 mana or 2 mana pirate out. Now, whether or not they live until the next turn for this to activate is another question, but I think if you're building a pirate rogue deck, he's certainly going to be worth including. So moving on to Shaman, the class that got probably the most love in this expansion. So Totem Golem here, this first one, is a 2 mana 3 4. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Usually for 2 mana, you get a 2 3 or 3 2, 3 4. Of course, this is Overload 1, so you're gonna lose that next. You're gonna lose that mana crystal next turn. So he's functionally three mana three four, but getting him out on turn two is awesome. So a three mana three four on turn two, you're pretty much gonna favorably trade with any creature your opponent puts on the board, uh, any minion your opponent puts on the board. You can even coin him out turn one if you had another one mana card. So a turn one three four is disgusting. I don't want to have to see that happen when my opponent does it. Sure, it mean you'll, it'll mean you only have one mana next turn, but 
but even if you play this on curve on turn two, it means you'll have two mana next turn. You can play other two drops, or you can drop a totem. He's really powerful. If this new mid-range shaman or this new totem shaman that people are talking about are going to be a, be a thing, totem golem is 100% going to be played in it because it is super good. Uh, <laughs> Blizzard new shaman was like the least played class or something, or the lowest win rate or whatever. Nobody was no nobody's been playing it since like goblins and gnomes. So yeah, totem golem super powerful. It's a common. I'm so glad it's a common. Everyone's going to get their playset. Try it out. If Totem Shaman's gonna be a thing, I think Tuscar Totemic will be on board. Again, 3 mana, 3 2. Stats are not good, but his effect is extremely powerful. So, Battlecry summon any random totem. So, any is capitalized here because they really mean any. It can be any of your four hero power totems, or it could be any of the, you know, collectible totems. So, it's your Flame Tongue totem, or your Totem Golem, <laughs> or, you know, Vitality totem. Or, you know, any so any totem that's been released. Uh, and so, sure, it kind of feels bad when you get a hero power totem. But honestly, that is, you know, one to two mana value that you're getting for the free hero power. And sure, and sure's up that next time you hero power, you get a different totem out in the field. Um, but then it just gets really crazy if you put any of the collectible totems in play. If you totem Tuscar Totemic into a totem golem, that's... What is this now? Four, six. That's six, six of stats for three mana. No overload, no anything. That's crazy. Or you could even put out the mana tide totem and you get a, free, you know, a zero three that draws you a card at the end of the turn. I think his effect is really powerful. On average, I'd say most totems are pretty good. Yeah, it'll feel bad to get hero power one, but even then, maybe you'll get a top totem to protect your Tuscar uh, from, uh, you know, an unfavorable trade. Or you'll get a vitality totem that helps, you know, or you get a healing totem that heals up your board or. He's spell power, so you can clear something off. I think he's a deceptively, again, deceptively powerful card. Really cool. I'm looking forward to using it. Uh, Healing Wave is a new shaman spell. Three mana, restore seven health. So, again, this is already kind of in line with the power of the rest of healing cards. You've got Holy Light and Paladin, which is two mana, restore six health. And Healing Touch and Druid, which is three mana, restore eight health. So slightly worse than that. But you joust. And if you win the joust you restore 14 health instead. Wow. <laughs> that is a lot of, that's half a hero. Um, one of the main reasons Shaman hasn't been getting played is because the meta is so fast and so aggressive. You're dead by turn four, five, six, and Shaman has no good healing. So Shamans who want to live are putting in healing, you know, heal bots, antique heal bots in their deck to try and gain eight health. And heal bots a good card and it works, but you can't play it till turn five, turn four at the earliest if you save the coin. And so this is a great way to keep yourself alive against the onslaught of the hunter or a paladin uh, in an early aggression. Uh, Shaman is an interesting choice to have joust because you don't usually have a ton of high mana cost cards, but again, if you're running, running Azure Drakes like they usually do, or certainly your Fire Elementals, even Fire Guard Destroyers, and then something like a Neptulon or Dr. Boom, there's a good chance you might get value out of this joust. And even 7 health is a good way to keep Shamans alive, but 14 health, by the time you play this, you're usually going back up to 30. And so, it's awesome. <laughs> I'm really excited for it to use Healing Wave. And it's to be like, oh, yeah, your opponent, you thought you were doing pretty good. You got me down pretty low. Nope. I'm back up to 30. Your turn. And finally, we've got... The Mist Caller. This is the Shaman Legendary, 6 mana, 4-4. Four, four. So the stats are bad, right? Okay, moving on. Uh, no, let's not move on. It's Battle Cry. Give all minions in your hand and deck. Plus one, plus one. Uh, yeah, you read that right. For 6 mana, every single creature, either in your hand or in your deck, that you'll draw later, gets plus one, plus one. His effect is extremely powerful. And it's a battle cry, so even though he will probably die the turn after you play him, because he has such a small body, you already got that value out of him. Even if you, say, have five minions back in your deck, five minions now just got plus one, plus one. Uh, you know, people say, you know, he's obviously be worse if you draw him late in the game, and you don't have very many minions left either in your hand or in your deck. But if you assume you could play him on curve turn six, that's really powerful, especially if you're trying to live to a long game or even this mid game. Every single thing is better. Your piloted shredders are now five fours. Your <laughs> your fire elementals are now seven sixes, and it gets just crazier from there. Your extra rakes are five fives. Um, it's really good. I don't know if it's gonna see play, but it's powerful enough that 
I think certainly it could be played and certainly could find a home in a slower uh, Shaman deck. Super excited for this one. Now this is we're moving on to the last class, and hopefully this didn't run too long. This is a warrior card, a warrior being one of my favorite classes. My three favorite are Druid, Warrior, and Hunter. Uh, so this is Alex draws his champion, two mana, two, three. Stats are good. Battle cry, if you're holding a dragon game, plus one attack and charge. So that's right, if you're holding a dragon, he's a two mana, three, three charger. Uh, yeah, keep in mind, Wolf Rider is a three, one, three mana charger. That's crazy. Uh, it really looks like Blizzard wants to make Dragon Warrior a thing. Uh, what er I mentioned earlier in this video. Alex Raza will be great for a Dragon Warrior. This is an early way to clear the board. You get, he's a 3 mana 3 3, so you can probably clear their 1 drop or even some of their 2 drops with 3 health. I think it's very powerful. Maybe even you could use it in a more aggressive strategy, though I'm not sure what dragons you would want to use in an aggressive strategy. I think it's cool. I think if Dragon Warrior is a thing, this might be worth considering. Again, Warrior has a lot of removal, so maybe you'll just run Fiery War Axe instead of this. But I like it. I thought it looked cool. I like the art too, so that's why I included it. Uh, so Bolster is a card that will make sense once I preview the next card. Uh, Bolster is this warrior, new warrior spell. It's common, two mana, give your taunt minions plus two plus two. So in this reveal, people were kind of like, well, okay, you don't really run that many taunt minions. Maybe you've got your Senjins, maybe you've got your shield, I mean your uh, Sludge Belchers, but you need at least probably two taunt minions on the board. You definitely need at least two, but more would be great. Uh, taunt minions on the board for this to be worth something. Uh, well, so this effect is, ex this effect is extremely powerful if you have two or three or more taunt minions on the board. And a good way to do that, and uh, where I think this uh, Taunt Warrior might be a new deck is this card here, Sparring Partner. It's a two mana, three two, rare, Taunt, and it's Battle Cry. So it itself is Taunt, and it's Battle Cry reads, give a minion Taunt. So this is really powerful. On turn two, if you had a one drop, or even later in the game, you can drop this Taunter, and then you can give any of your other creatures Taunt. It's super powerful, it helps against early aggression certainly, so warriors are going to have uh, an even better way about stopping uh, early aggro, but it also gives you a lot of taunters. So if you play this, and then maybe even the same turn play a bolster, you're guaranteed, if you had a minion on board before you played him, to get plus four plus four from bolster. So I think taunt warrior might be some new kind of tempo or mid-range or even control deck that comes about. I'm excited to try and play around with it. I would love to get that a huge value out of bolster, play my sparring, you know, play my sparring partner, get a giant bolster, and just control the board for the rest of the game. I like him. I'm excited. It's got cool art. And finally, wrap it up here. Hopefully, it hasn't gone on too long. Is Varian Rin, ten mana, seven seven. So the stats aren't great, but his battle cry reads: draw three cards, put any minions you drew directly into the battlefield. Wow. <laughs> That's a powerful effect. So not only is drawing three cards uh, kind of make up for the stat disadvantage of being a 10 mana 7-7, seven, seven, but any of those minions, you put them into the battlefield. So one thing to consider here is their battle cries won't trigger. Um, and so you have to really consider the composition of your deck. Say if you had a shield maiden, you wouldn't get that 5 armor. But then, if you consider you have a shield maiden, you just got a 7-7 seven, seven and a 5-5, five, five, as well as whatever you drew out on the board. I think his effect is so powerful. So you need to learn, you need to live to turn 10, but Warrior is one of the classes best suited to living that long. And I think he could easily be see, see play in this Taunt Warrior deck that I mentioned, because you could get a bunch of value putting a bunch of Taunt creatures into play, potentially even control Warrior. Um, though it would feel kind of bad to hear Alex draws out on the battlefield and not have the cool battle, the battle cry of setting an opponent, you know, setting a health to 15. Um, he's really powerful. Again, he's something like an Aviana, potentially better, where his effect is so powerful that I really think there's going to be some deck that runs it. Um, so that's it. I'm excited about the Grand Tournament. Thanks for watching with me. This is my first time recording from my computer and also having my face in it. So I apologize if I, like, I'm looking and not looking at the camera or looking at something and it looks weird. So these are 26 of the Hearthstone's The Grand Tournament cards that I think are really interesting, powerful, and may potentially make an impact. So if you like this, check out all the links in the description for my blog, podcast, Twitch stream, 
more videos. Check out the channel for more videos. Thank you so much. I'm excited for the Grand Tournament. Let me know if you're excited too. Until next time, make an impact.